own CBS Tonight. Since no two people have identical fingerprints, fingerprinting has long been considered a foolproof way of fingering the guilty. But is it? Aaron Moyard here, 48 Hours, has our Sunday morning cover story. Okay, we're going to roll your thumbs in towards the body and the fingers away from the body so we get a nice, clean set of ridges. Oh, good ridges. I have good ridges? Yes, you do. Nice and clear. Fingerprints. They are a universal symbol of identity. These ridges, which allow us to grasp objects, form a complex mix of whirls, arches, and loops, believed to be unique to each person. Not even identical twins have identical fingerprints, which is why fingerprint analysis plays a huge role in solving crimes. Remember, always start with the latent print. Once a cop, now a criminology professor at the University of Maryland. Okay, we're going to use graphite powder. Uh, we've laid some uh, finger, uh, latent prints. Tom Mariello says the best way to track down criminals is still the old-fashioned way, dusting for prints. It's the most common physical evidence uh, that we find uh, you know, at a crime scene. Is when two objects touch each other, they take on characteristics of each other, and, and there's always fingerprints everywhere. Fingerprint analysis was first used in an American court to convict a killer in 1911. Since then, as any fan of CSI knows, criminal investigation has become a lot more high-tech. We've got a perfect match. After almost a century, Fingerprint analysis remains a widely accepted forensic tool, but that may be about to change. Without question, fingerprint evidence is considered to be, by juries, incontrovertible evidence of guilt. And unfortunately, the reality is far different than that. Attorney and forensic expert Patrick Kent with the Maryland Public Defender's Office says that while DNA evidence is a science, fingerprint analysis is just an art. It's never been tested. It's never been shown to be accurate. They don't even have a standard way that they do fingerprint comparisons. Are you saying fingerprint evidence shouldn't be allowed? My answer unequivocally is that it should not. And in a decision last fall that shocked lawyers across the country, a judge in Maryland agreed. She threw out the fingerprint evidence tying the defendant, Brian Keith Rose, to murder. I feel the jury in that case is actually being denied very valuable evidence. Glenn Langenberg is a fingerprint examiner with the Minnesota State Crime Lab. I'm not saying it is foolproof. You know, and is that our standard that in order to use evidence in court, it must be perfect? I mean, the irony is um, eyewitness testimony gets in every time. I and mean, no one ever challenges eyewitness testimony. It comes in, they get cross-examined, but it's still coming in every time. The judge's decision in the Rose case could jeopardize thousands of criminal investigations nationwide. She called fingerprint evidence a subjective, untested, unverifiable identification procedure. How do you respond to that? I, I don't believe that there's um, evidence to support that type of decision. Tom Bush runs the FBI's West Virginia complex, which processes as many as 140,000 fingerprints a day. When you think about the history of fingerprints... And he says the department has been using prints to catch criminals for more than 80 years. Al Capone, this picture of Al. Which means a lot of bad guys have left a lasting impression. Who else do you have? Well, we got Pretty Boy Floyd. This is Machine Gun Kelly. Clyde Barrow. These are more fingerprints where he'd been arrested previous times. Today, with the automated fingerprint ID system, which stores tens of millions of prints from criminal arrests and employment background checks, analysis can take just minutes. Police from around the country can contact the system and get a response in just hours. Do you have any idea of how reliable this is? But we believe our system to be in the high 98 percentile uh, accurate. But if fingerprint analysis is so accurate, why did the Baltimore County judge in the Brian Rose case refuse to allow it in as evidence? Because of what happened to this man in Portland, Oregon. It was surreal. It was just surreal. Um, my first impression, no way, there's got to be a mistake. 
On May 6, 2004, FBI agents came to Mona Mayfield's home with a search warrant. They sat at the kitchen table, and um, the gentleman opened up his briefcase, and he said this bag was found in the van 20 minutes away from the Madrid, Spain bombing, and, you know, your husband's fingerprint was on it. Just two months earlier, terrorists had bombed four commuter trains in Madrid, killing almost 200 people. An international investigation led to Brandon Mayfield, Mona's husband, an American lawyer who converted to Islam. Mayfield was arrested after this smudged partial print found on a bag of detonators was matched to his, not by one FBI examiner, but three. I, I honestly felt like I was being framed because I, I hadn't been out of the country for over 10 years. Mayfield, an Army veteran, had no criminal record and no ties to terrorist groups. His lawyer brought in an independent examiner with the hope of clearing his name. And that person as well says it's your fingerprint. Yeah, four it's mistakes in a row. I mean, weren't you in a panic at that point? Yeah, it was. that was a, a very dark day for me, to say the least. I believe it was, I'd probably already been in jail and locked down for over two weeks. I was tired, and I was, I was just being worn thin. And I assume, I mean, as the days go on, people are thinking, you're married to a, a terrorist. Yes, yes. And, I, and, then, and then I began to, I didn't want to let my kids out of, out of the house. I didn't want to send them to school. I was scared to send them to school. I was afraid for their safety. Two weeks after Mayfield's arrest, Spanish investigators found the man to whom the fingerprint really belonged. If the Spanish police had not actually found the real person who left that fingerprint, where would Brandon Mayfield be today? There's no question that Mr. Mayfield would be sentenced either to life or sentenced to death. No question. It turns out a partial distorted print, like the one the FBI had, often yields multiple potential matches. In fact, when the Madrid print was put into the government's automated system, 20 prints with similarities came up, including Mayfield's. After the first FBI examiner mistakenly matched the print to Mayfield, the other two confirmed it. The Bureau has since promised procedural reforms, but attorney Patrick Kent says he isn't buying it. The problem is how many Mayfields are there? That if, quote, the best, by their own admission, can make such a glaring error in a high-profile case when they knew the world was watching, what is happening in the counties, in the countryside, in areas where we don't, quote, have the best of the best. But examiner Glenn Langenberg believes this case is not the norm. I'm always concerned if an innocent person has to go to jail, of course, um, but I'm, I'm not concerned that it's a rampant issue, that, you know, this is happening every single day that people are, you know, going to jail on fingerprint evidence. I, I just don't believe that. Brandon Mayfield, the American arrested in connection with the Madrid train bombings, has been released from prison. Brandon Mayfield received a public apology from the FBI, along with a $2 million legal settlement. I was looking at severe consequences and felt totally helpless and had no idea how my family is going to take care of themselves or what's going to become of me. I just want to leave it in the past. But of course it's going to affect me. It's always going to affect me. I mean, even for my children, uh, it's always going to affect them for the rest of their lives. As for Brian Keith Rose in Maryland, he's still facing murder charges. The case has now been moved to federal court where the judge is expected to allow in the fingerprint evidence. Mr. Mayfield is not just an aberration, but Mr. Mayfield is a public face of many people in jail. It leaves me sleepless, quite candidly, because, in fact, it's not just that it scares me to death, it's the evidence that they use to put people to death. Next, Kent State.